<sighs> this movie just immediately opens up a whole can of worms, doesn't it? So many different elements of it all spark controversy. Of all the films I had to wake up to on my 24th birthday, of course it was something as notorious as this. And let's address the elephant in the room right off. Long before the movie even released, I was umming and ahhing over whether to label this as another I pirated Mulan and this is why kind of video, cause this movie is more than just a shallow live action Disney remake of our era. This is 2020, and we've gotta have a full political movement grumbling underneath it. Ultimately, I decided not to pirate it. Not because I'm a big fan of Disney Plus or decided the suffering of an entire country wasn't worth punishing one actor or whatever justification there is. It was actually because a friend had already offered me to watch a paid version on their Disney Plus account for my birthday technically the legal pirating approach. Whether I would have actually gone elsewhere on any other day, I don't really know. It's not like it was inaccessible like Scoob, but it was still direct online, so the sources are totally there. And actually, what muddies the water more is when this Disney Plus announcement was first dated, I saw a tweet that pretty perfectly encapsulated my views on it, and then I read further into the comments and found a lot of people disagreed. Is it morally correct to spit on the works of hundreds for the ideals of a few? Is this a single actor sized issue? Or is this reflective of an entire brand pandering for those profitable hidden away audiences? And is the subject more complicated at a closer glance being chained to a society that would implore vocalizing a certain perspective and not necessarily agreeing with it personally? It's a dicey situation to piece out, and funnily enough, movements in either direction for the actor has sparked boycotting movements. From the obvious problem felt over here, to labelling herself as Asian rather than Chinese. She can just never win. Good. Apart from the fact this multi-billion dollar company is still supporting her full-heartedly behind her. But let's drop the political part for a moment. The fact is, I've seen this film. Is it any good? Well, it's a Disney live action remake. It's not necessarily trying to be a magnum opus. Instead, it's more like a different retelling to bring back more money to the executives. And this movie does take some interesting new directions for the film. It's annoyingly alright, but I guess it depends how open-minded you're willing to get with the film. For a start, this film is overwhelmingly inspired by the likes of modern Asian dramas. The themes, the style, and the storytelling are much different from the original cartoon, and even from the perspective of a western live-action film, it's quite unique. But if you yourself are unsure whether you're gonna watch this film and pay for it too, let me be the one to tell you the kind of differences to expect. I mean, you basically already know the story anyway. One of the biggest fundamental changes is Mulan herself. She is no longer some ordinary woman who puts in the effort in training to become a strong-willed warrior for her country. She's essentially the chosen one now. Born of natural talent and a new element to the universe, Chi. Her ancestors have granted her abilities to be naturally talented and skilled, and she even starts the film by hopping up onto a roof and then perfectly landing too. And the village doesn't like that. Until she lands, then all is forgiven, I guess. Also, she has a little sister now, the perfect woman role in this society. She's not really used, but we'll get to that later. So yeah, we then get the standard Mulan is a daughter, not a son, she should know her place, blah blah. Great establishment for the arc of the film that's overtly clear for the new kids in the audience, and the dad doesn't have the strength in him to tell Mulan this. But he will teach us about the phoenix, their ancestral guide in life. It's the closest thing to a Mushu replacement we get. Cause yes, beyond all the real controversy of political unrest, this remake actually takes an entirely new approach by removing the comedic cartoon elements from the film. No comic relief characters, no animated animals, mostly, and no musical numbers either. This is just a full on drama now. Which is simultaneously abhorrent in comparison to a much more entertaining format, but also quite brave as a new approach. Making a serious drama is at least interesting, but disliked by most who grew up on the original. So, okay, the format and the chi is a whole new element, but the actual story also has a pivotal change with its antagonist. There's two now. Not a Hun, a Rorun, basically the same role though, and our newbie being this witch. Magic has now been officially established in this Mulan world, if the chi wasn't quite enough. Mulan was also told to keep her chi ness secret, or else she herself would be called a witch apparently, so I guess it's less of a women empowerment film about how any woman could do a man's job and is instead... Mulan is special. But also Woman too. 
Wanna see more magic? Sure. The witch can possess people. And when the Rurans attack, they just... Well, my first thought was this was some real Bollywood physics, but really it's just not Western physics. Arrows can be caught, walls can be sprinted up, and people can just appear now. It's actually legitimately interesting to see, and certainly spices up some more generic action scenes it could have been. Still, it's not the grounded Mulan from before. We see the Emperor make his decision of war and one man from each family, etc., as well as the villain's perspective, Bori Khan, telling about his plans and the conflict of the two villains. I wonder where this is gonna go. Though it does let us learn that the witch was picked up by Bori Khan as some kind of scorned dog because she wants to be accepted in the world and she isn't because... Woman. Also probably the killing with magic thing. And hey, since you made it this far, do consider subscribing. Only you can help balance out my unsub ratio count and I stayed up all night to actually get this done. I had a very busy weekend and I had to have a shower now or else I'd look like a very greasy, gross goblin. You're welcome that I don't look like that. Please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> People are suffering somewhere in the world, but I've got the blessing of CG rabbits. <laughs> so here's where the sister actually becomes useful. Mulan is getting all prepped up. There's no song. It's mostly just snappy ASMR. But the instrumental song in the background calls back to it at least a little bit. That's not horrid, I guess. But as she's learning how to be a good wife with calm ASMR skills, a spider appears, her sister's biggest fear. Instead of that lucky cricket from the cartoon, this thing gets in the way instead. She must be. Is something wrong? <laughs> I don't know why, but this just tickles me. Is something wrong? Anyway, instead of addressing the spider under the teapot, they just... let it loose, and... I mean, what are you gonna do? Mulan catches all the china and symbolically it's her female expectations that ruin the moment in the scene. And she's shot down. Pretty sure it was the matchmaker who kind of sparked this whole thing though, you know? With the whole, whatever. Anyway, before getting an emotional talk with her father over who she wants to be, now the Imperial Army appears, completely early from usual. It is what it is. Though now when talking about it afterwards, he really lashes out on Mulan, which while a little bit quick, I can kind of understand considering he's literally signing his life away, and that's pretty stressful. I'd probably lash out too. Now though we didn't get the first father-daughter scene from the original, here's another one instead. The father is clearly weakened, but he sharpens his sword as the two talk about life, the ancestral phoenix again, how there is no courage without fear, and his last wishes for Mulan. It's pretty touching stuff. And then, I mean, you know the drill. Bet the cinematographer felt chuffed about that shot. But hey, wait, what about the whole, you know, cutting your hair part of the decision? That's like, so iconic over to the east. How do you just skip out on something like that? Come on. And speaking of that phoenix, it's our reoccurring magical theme here as they occasionally appear as a guide through Mulan's adventure, helping her reach her actual destination. Feels like a Pokemon ho oh moment, honestly, to me, but, you know, whatever works. And now the characters at training are a little shaken up, too. That old cricket from the cartoon? He's now a full person, cute and innocent, and honestly, better than the entire trio. The trio is still a thing, but uh, Zhang, the love interest, is split into two characters now. One as a rival recruit turned love interest, and the other as the commander again, Sung. Hey, it's Jimmy Wong. Nice. Now I've got an actor I do like, and an actor that I don't. Well, it's all yin and yang. And yeah, I know she wasn't very convincing in the cartoon either, but she certainly stands out in live action. Also, they establish her, like, chest brace, which, you know, logically makes sense, but she takes it off when she sleeps. I sure hope she doesn't get woken up early. Uh, war camp. Disgrace for you. Disgrace for your family. Dishonor on your cow! We're going to make men out of every single one of you. All right, okay. This training montage might hint at the song, but I really can't hear it. Their greatest song, magnum opus for the iconic Mulan soundtrack, is just completely trashed. Also, there's no pole this time, but this mountain climbing one is their replacement. There's pros and cons to it, but we'll get to it later. One of them is expelled for cheating, but it doesn't really add much to the stakes. Maybe it would have done in the cartoons, but it was just there for being there. And yeah, a whole lot less of the trio gimmicks. In fact, Cricky is the one to stand out more than all of them combined, pretty much, being the innocent one and just, you know, I guess the closest thing to a comic relief we get. Their only real scene with the actual trio being involved is when they're discussing their choices in women and being completely derogatory about it. How lovable. 
Oh, remember the Chi thing? Yeah, so that's a thing again. Apparently in a rival fight against her rival, Mulan decides to whip it all out because the plot needs to go on, I guess. And this is apparently controversial because of the witch parallels, I guess. Here's the bathing scene with less skin. Okay. And on the villain side, the Rurons dislike the witch and the witch hears of it. And she fakes accepting her place. I guess she's the real women empowerment story. Hmm, though she is also special, so, I don't know. Mulan is summoned by the commander, and while faked out on it being about the secret of her gender, it's actually about her chi skills. What a surprise. And she's praised for her abilities. Also, she's granted marriage with the commander's daughter. Oof. And the training now involves chi, too. Nice. So remember that mountain trial? Yeah, here it's actually a major improvement. The payoff for actually completing it is far more compelling. Being able to literally see the mountainous views of China. That's just stellar. Here's some talons and curtain bending. And Mulan's upset she can't uphold the pillar of truth on her sword or to her regiment. And it goes nowhere else, really. And then there's the reveal of the destroyed city. It's less impactful. The high highs of a song number are missing, so the low lows of reality sinking in seem a whole lot more muted than usual. Eh. What is more powerful, though, is the soldiers' chats the night before battle, talking about never seeing each other again. I can honestly get behind that a whole lot more, but that's all there is to say. Battle time! It's the remade mountain scene! On the flatlands! Also, it's daytime. Uh, okay. Give us a charge down the mountain clip anyway, I'm sure it can work. That's it. That's more like a slope than a hill, let alone a mountain. Oof, this is embarrassing. But let's continue. George! <laughs> Here's some changes. The villain now escapes and Mulan fights on horseback with some extra chi battling. This wasn't really trained for before, so naturally it doesn't go too well, but Mulan then ends up chasing them to some kind of hot spring, steamy hotlands, where the witch now makes a confrontation, realizing her gender secret and defeating her. The thin ice is there for stakes, but then literally goes nowhere. So nice one, set designers. You really, you really pulled out the stops for that one. Even when wrongfully distributing her weight, like nothing happens. The boys also get a moment mid-battle, but not really, but this is cool. Hua Jun is said to die, but Mulan lives, accepting who she actually is and going forth as Mulan. The chest brace from earlier is actually the thing to save her from death. Nice! Plus, when she was hiding herself with this massive secret, she was actually poisoning her chi, apparently. Mulan assists in battle, chi skills and all, and the enemy flees, thinking that she's also a witch. Nice and thematic. Then the battle turns to this defensive maneuver as the team sets up this Roman shield position and the Rurans splatter them with catapults. They're pinned down and Mulan has no fireworks. So instead, she calls a horse in the middle of war, somehow, tricks an ambush pretty cleverly with some extra helmets that I really like, and the Rurans, now without their smart leaders, I guess, decide to turn a catapult her way, except then they massively, massively overshoot their shot from like three miles up the mountain and cause that avalanche again. I guess. Like, I get that there were beats meant to be hit, but this is just a stupid course of events to hit those beats. Everyone dies, the rival is saved, even though he's like drowning in snow and the horse can just run along the top of it, I guess, and Mulan reveals herself and is expelled for it. Kinda would've been cooler if like she was to be executed and then her friends bargained her for expulsion instead, or if they, you know, contributed anything, but oh, whatever, later. Abandoned and alone, the witch comes to Milan with her come to the dark side spiel, you know, the classic reverse Uno card. Monologuing on the plans to sneak behind and nab the Emperor so they can have a place in this new world. Mulan rejects, and the witch doesn't kill her for it. <laughs> Mulan tells the army there's that phoenix again, and they switch over to letting her lead them again, because everyone believes in her. I guess this is them contributing, but we'll see. Finale time! The Emperor is tricked into a duel that's actually an ambush. What is this scene? Why is it dialogued so weirdly, and why the sudden change in direction? Huh? 
Anyway, Mulan is granted her small task force to infiltrate the city, though really it's just her fighting and the others guard her, so not really a task force effort. The Emperor is ambushed, but he's a chi curtain fighter too, I guess, but he's captured anyway. Mulan and team fight through more baddies, one with a mace that doesn't actually use it, and Mulan goes forth alone, because the plot demands it, I guess. The Emperor is gone, and the Witch is there instead. Mulan whips out her Uno reverse card from before and replays it with another No You, convincing the Witch to the good side now. And they race to the Emperor, who's to be burned in molten lava, I guess. How interesting. The Witch talks of Mulan appearing a woman leader to take him down, and as he goes to kill Mulan, she dies in hawk form instead. Kind of nice and dramatic, though dead people don't close their eyes when they die, but sure. Mulan fights up top because Bori Khan didn't have a second arrow or something. She almost loses, stands up, there's ho again, progressively getting closer and closer, and she plays broken physics with a plank of wood to finally win. She starts to release the Emperor and... Well, at least that's how I'd love for it to go, anyway. It was established earlier on, after all. The boys finally have finished their fight, even though timeline-wise this really doesn't work, and no, Cricky's not dead. Mulan is celebrated, decorated with rewards, and rejects it all to see her family instead. Can't she do that anyway, and then just come back? Ah, oh, whatever. And don't expect romance in this film. This Mulan is too sheltered, despite sharing a room with boys for an undisclosed amount of time, to even hold hands. That's disgusting! She runs home, her father isn't dead, which I briefly thought would have been at least an interesting classical turn, and she's happily welcomed back. Also, the Imperial Army return to bestow that same reward again because they're just really impatient, and finally she accepts. A new sword for the family, and a new sign as well. Yeah, of course it is. It's a whole cultural thing, I get it. Fine. Now go be a Pokémon master, you soldier turned legend. That's what your real calling is. This film is annoyingly not terrible. Regardless of how you may feel politically, I went into this film wanting to bash it. I don't agree with the foundation impressions, I don't like the pandering for an extra profit, and I certainly don't like the outright immoral opinions. But in keeping an open mind on the film itself, it's alright. If this was a one-to-one -one recreation of Mulan without the musical, without the comedy, and without Mushu, then yeah, it's bad, and notably worse. But this is like a soft retelling, a slightly different universe with new moving parts. The way that the story feels less empowering with those Chosen One vibes, but the execution of magic in this world is interesting. Seeing the raw runes actively strategize with the witch with distractions and attacks is intriguing to me, and makes the film an awful lot less generic on those levels. The characters are different enough to spice up the idea, though sometimes that's a flaw too. I mean, the entire trio is hampered down pretty much with Cricky being like the best of all of them really. And the whole idea of Mulan being this character who fights against the traditional regime and fights for what's right is terribly lost when this is your main casted actor. And Disney just continues to move on after it. Would I watch this film again? No, not really. For a start, I still don't officially have Disney+, Plus, but it's also not worth the £20 no food price tag, and it's just kind of another film. The cartoon is notably more entertaining to watch for its extra doses of humour, and while this is taking things more seriously, albeit less groundedly, there's also Mulan adaptations that tackle the live action drama aspect a whole lot better. I don't like the message of family over everything, but that's probably my western brain liking individuality and disliking it for the fact that a lot of families are toxic, but beyond that, if this wasn't literally my job, I would absolutely be part of the boycotting movement. What's being missed are the interesting changes, but they're dwarfed by the iconage of the original and the ironic message disparity between fiction and reality. So yeah, if you've been missing out on Mulan, that's all you really need to know. It's unfortunately not trash, but yeah, the cartoon is still better. The most you get in reference is sly lines of dialogue and that one reflective song track being repeated in orchestral form multiple times throughout the movie, rather than taking pieces of the songs from the actual 
story beats that they're being connected to. But I'll some, whatever. Mulan is weird. Politically, it's a mess. And I've been darting around all the wording thanks to my YouTube overlords, but if the trending tag on Twitter is anything to go on, then maybe this will have a notable impact on the numbers. I don't know. Director Online opens up both access to everyone and access to pirates too, so I'll be genuinely interested to see the results. Also, the crew are almost entirely white anyway, so it's not even like an Asian drama made by Asians under the Disney brand, it's just more white Disney doing it themselves. Oh boy. The more I think about it, the more annoyingly upset I get about the world around us. Social media and corporate profit prioritizing at its best. Ah oh well, I'm gonna put a pin on it there. For now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. Oh, well, that was something. I'm genuinely curious to know how you took the Mulan remake. Have you watched it? Have you paid for it? Are you going to pay for it? Are you going to pirate it? Have you, are you done now that you've seen this video? You're never going to need to touch the movie again? What's going on? What are people's opinions? Don't get too politically toxic if you can, but if you want more discussions, go to the Discord.